So you've decided to sell your tire shop. Regardless of the reason, I'm here to share in this video what are some things to consider uh, for successfully selling your tire shop to someone. So I have some good tips to help you find the potential buyer and also determine how much you should be selling your tire shop for. Also, in the past, I've helped other business owners either sell tires online or import tires or anything that has to do with the tire industry. So if you're still interested in being or participating in the tire industry, feel free to subscribe. Also help me by smashing that like button because it really helps my YouTube uh, video, you know, just my YouTube channel in general. So thank you. Now, before I start in sharing how much your business should be sold for, I want to make sure you guys understand that your business should have at least some clean accounting books. What does this mean? You should be recording all your sales. You should be recording all your expenses and hopefully yourself or a bookkeeper or a CPA is going through your bank, you know, statements, your credit card statements and accurately, you know, doing your accounting pretty much. If you don't do this again, or if you don't have all this in place, I would highly encourage you to start there. Okay. You cannot start selling your business if you don't even know how much you're selling, how much you're spending. These are very common questions that buyers are going to want to know from the business. And if you're not prepared, they're either going to lowball you or they're simply not going to make an offer. Now to find out how much your business is worth, there's two ways. The first way it's called the net worth. You know, how much is your business worth? So for example, if I have a business or a tire shop that has alignment machines, equipment to change tires and tires inventory, all worth $200,000. And let's say I only owe the bank $50,000 from a loan I took, you know, to buy some equipment or inventory. Well, technically it's 200,000 minus 50 equals, you know, 150,000. That's the difference. The difference is what my business is technically worth, right? Now, this is always a good way to start of knowing how much your business is roughly worth. Uh, if you have accounting books, again, the proper uh, report that could tell you how much your business is worth is called the balance sheet. You would get the assets minus the liabilities equals your equity. Uh, keep in mind that in the equity section, you will also have any retained earnings that you've had in the past. So this method works well for those businesses or those business owners that didn't take out any profits in the prior years and they just left the profits working in the business. This is again very helpful because then you get a report that kind of brings out all those profits back and shows it to the potential buyer like, hey, you know what, out, out of all these, you know, let's say five years I've ran my tire shop, I left probably two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars that I never took out. I left it in the business so that the business could grow. But again, it's still equity in the business, right? Now, again, there are some things to consider here. Uh, the buyer could potentially say, yeah, well, you bought a one hundred thousand dollar alignment machine, but you know, your machine is no longer new. It's used and potentially, you know, market fair market value is no longer one hundred thousand. Maybe it's fifty thousand. And so these are little things that, you know, you'll have to kind of broom and iron out as you're going with a potential buyer. But ideally, you know, you, you still want to make a high enough uh, start in a high enough offer because it's always going to go down. So you might as well just try to start high. So you kind of meet in the middle. Just to be clear, this first method is uh, I would recommend it for businesses, again, who have been operating for more uh, of a long term and have some profits in their past so that, you know, they could kind of consider and reclaim back those profits. The second way to value your business, uh, you know, to, to a potential buyer is through a income a multiplier. So what this means is it doesn't really care how much you own or how much you owe as long as it's, you know, leveled out right so you own you own a hundred thousand you owe a hundred you technically the company's worth zero right but if your business is actually making profit let's say your business is uh, doing let's say fifty thousand or a hundred thousand in profit every year and you're just taking all that profit out uh your business is still profitable and that creates value for for investors so there's this way that it's called the income multiplier uh, in a way i'm trying to simplify things right so you know so you don't get too confused but the way this works is that say you're making hundred thousand dollars a year or your business is making hundred thousand a year and you could say well you know what i'm going to multiply this by two or three uh meaning i'm going to sell my business to, for three hundred thousand because you know if you buy my business for three hundred thousand uh technically speaking you know you should keep my business and within three years you're going to get back your return plus now you're going to own the business and so again multipliers are really up to uh the buyer and the seller discretion a good multiplier, you know, kind of like what we see in an in, in industry could be anywhere between one to three. Um, you know, if it's a software company, we've seen some multipliers like 25 or 10. 
Uh, but you know, again, if, if you have a buyer that's willing to pay five times the multiplier, or if you're noticing that your business is just growing ex exponentially, you know, definitely you can just increase the multiplier uh, justifying that. You know, at the end of the day, it's a negotiation and you want to justify why you have a five times multiplier uh, in your business when you're trying to value or find that number. So again, assuming I had a business that had over $200,000 uh, worth of things I own or assets and $50,000 loan, technically I have $150,000 equity. Let's assume that this same business is making me $100,000 of profit per year, but I'm just taking out all the $100,000 for myself, you know, go out vacation, whatever. I'm not leaving anything on the table. What I would do or how I would value this business is 300,000 on the multiplier, you know, part, and then the 150,000 that we still have on the equity part. So uh, for me, you know, it would be somewhere around $450,000 what I would be looking to sell this specific tire shop, you know, with the numbers I just shared. Not advice, I'm not saying that if that's you, you know, that's what you should go for. Uh, most likely me, I would kind of push it up to 500,000 because I know they're probably gonna try to knock it down to, you know, 300 and then we're gonna meet somewhere around the 400s. But again, just kind of so you can visualize how the numbers would work. Now we're off to the second part of the video and that is finding a buyer. Now again, once we have the number and we have the tire shop and we wanna sell, well, a lot of what I do get a lot from is people saying, well, it's not easy finding a buyer and you know, nobody wants to buy a tire shop. And that's not true, actually. I know I get emails all the time from either companies or venture capital firms or banks or people who just have money and want to get in the tire industry and they're more than willing to buy or invest uh, you know, in a tire firm. And so the idea here is finding the appropriate buyer and finding a buyer that kind of like fills that gap that you might be able to fill for them. So for example, I had this um, company, uh, they, they had, for whatever reason, they had a fund of money and they just wanted to get into the tire industry in a specific city, and but they didn't know anything about the tire industry, right? And so they reached out to me and they were looking for a company or a group of companies uh, that would be willing to sell um, and then, because again, they, they don't want to open the shop. They don't want to apply for permits. They don't want to do all that. They just want to get a business that's already up and running that has some sort of, you know, reputation. And then they're just going to rebrand them to whatever brand they, they have. And so again, uh, there's a lot of companies out there that, that do this and they've grown exponentially, you know, throughout the years. Uh, so there's that type of buyer. Just to name a few, for example, I know, if, and again, I'm not saying that these guys may buy you out. Uh, you know, I know sometimes they, they like companies uh, with at least five or 10 locations, but you know, just kind of give, gives you an idea of who are the companies out there that could be buying. And so one of uh, the companies I know, for example, is Sun Auto. Uh, I believe it's called Sun Auto, but it's, uh, yeah, they're, they've been buying, they bought a firm here in Las Vegas called Tireworks. And they've been buying a whole bunch of other tire shops. And so again, there's companies out there that just dedicate themselves in, in buying. But you gotta keep in mind because they're, they're good at what they do. They, they know their numbers. And so, you know, they also might be a bit more aggressive when it comes to negotiating. Another company that um, has been buying, you know, some companies here in Vegas, it's called Big Brand. Um, so, you know, these are two companies that I personally have seen myself in our local market. Uh, you know, been buying some businesses out. So, you know, something to keep in mind, there's always like Pep Boys and then other companies out there that are just looking into expanding or buying specific locations, but uh, it's it's out there and it's not that hard to get in contact with them and get in a, in a meeting and a conversation and see what happens. Now, another way is don't underestimate uh, classified ads, you know, such as Craigslist, Facebook, uh, you know, there's other sites out there that could help you sell your business. I believe there's one called Biz by Sell, which is a website that you just list your business and there's potential buyers out there. And so, you know, these places, you know, again, if you're already putting your market, you already have your numbers, you never know where, when the right buyer might come in and offer the right price that you guys both agree and just close the deal. Now, before we even continue uh, further along the video or we're almost towards the end, but uh, I do want to point out if you are looking to sell your tire shop, or if you're buying tire shops, you know, if you're just a firm or a company with a fund or a VC or whatever, and you wanna get into the tire automotive industry, feel free to email me. A lot of times, you know, I'll have companies just reach out to me wanting to, you know, purchase tire shops. And sometimes, again, not that often because maybe I've never made the announcement, but uh, if I have some business owners that want to sell their tire shop, I might be able to relate them 
uh, you know, to the right person. So, you know, just keep that in mind. My email is at the bottom. It did recently change to Fernando H at tirebase.io. But again, uh, if you have my old email, the old email still works. So just an FYI. Now let's just assume you got the number, you found the buyer, you guys are ready to seal the deal. Obviously every business and every company is going to have a different way of how to close terms, but let me just paint a picture of what you should expect. So again, just to make sure you guys will have to agree on the price. So how much are you guys, uh, how much is this business buying you out for? You guys will have to agree on the payment terms. Is it going to be cash? Is it going to be stock options? Is it going to be whatever? You know, normally I would just recommend you're going to be out. Might as well just get a check, get cash. And you know, this is their deal, right? Uh, oftentimes, some of these companies might still want you to work for them for at least one year or, you know, maybe six months just to kind of make sure that the operation continues to, you know, operate and, and the business doesn't just fall down. But when you're negotiating and the deal's almost closed, it's extremely important that you have a good attorney. Recently, in my case, I recently had an attorney who actually did a really good job. And really the attorney's role is to play devil's advocate, right? So a good attorney is going to be asking you hard questions. They're going to be asking questions that you're not going to know the, the answers to. And so these are the, the type of attorneys you want because they, they're thinking way ahead of you of potential problems that you might encounter. And when you bring those problems and solve them before you even close the deal, it makes things a lot easier. Like for example, what's gonna happen if six months from now, the company decides that, you know, whatever numbers that you presented to them weren't materially true. Again, let's just assume, right? Well, maybe you might wanna get a CPA letter. You might wanna, you know, make sure your books are good. You wanna make sure, you know, but again, it kind of gives you an idea of, uh, okay, we need to prevent this, right? Or what's gonna happen if they, Told you they were gonna make you one payment for you know in the beginning and then another payment once you finish you know their contract for six months but what happens if they don't pay you after the six months right so what happens are they gonna lose their money are they still going to be now 50 50 partner uh you know and so you have to detail all these things in the agreement and the contracts because if not you could be in a very bad position expect to spend anywhere between 300 to 400 dollars in a good attorney and again, I would recommend an attorney that you either have a referral from someone who has used them before and they've done really good work. Or again, you could always reach out to like a business chamber of commerce. Uh, you could always, uh, again, you could check technically reviews on Yelp, but I'm not very, you know, I don't like those. Normally I like to get a referral or uh, reach out to a business owner who either has the experience or a group of business that could refer you to a good business attorney. But anyways, guys, once that is all complete and the agreements are signed and you have completely transferred your shop, you have done it. You have sold your tie shop. You're ready to do whatever you want to do with those funds. But that brings me to the next question. What are you going to do? It's very important you have this question in mind because a lot of people have sold their businesses. They go out on a two month vacation only to realize that they're bored that they don't know what to do. And you know what? I'm going to go back and open another tire shop. There's nothing wrong with that. If you didn't sign a non-compete clause, you know, for X amount of years, there's nothing wrong with going back and, you know, just having a vacation, but there's no need for you to go through all that uncertainty. I feel like if you have an idea already of why you want to sell your tire shop, or if you want to sell your tire shop, be sure to have already an objective in mind. Why are you selling it? What's the purpose? Are you going to be buying a real estate property? Are you going to be now moving into a different industry? Are you going to be a you know, day trader or whatever the case might be? Are you going to be following your passion and your hobby? Uh, are you, it, whatever it is, just make sure you know what to expect after the fact that you sell your business. Because again, you don't want to be in a position where you sold and you're regretting the sellout. But well, guys, selling your tire shop can be a uh, complex process, but, you know, hopefully with these tips I just shared uh, can help you understand a little bit more what to expect. Again, if you did like this video, smash that like button, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions or any recommendations. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.